Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here. It's uh, midweek Wednesday. Hope you're having a good week so far. Hope everything's going good. A uh, couple things to talk about today. Um, uh, my last video, we did a, uh, uh, a military lineman set and uh, one of our subscribers, Raw Bacon, pointed out a very good point. He says, you know, it's amazing how, you know, you get a regular pair of pliers, you know, just a average pair of pliers and a average knife but when you put them together in a set in a uh, pouch it becomes something collectible and he's so right and let me give you an example now, this is of the this. kit that uh, raw bacon was referring to uh, the fact that you know these are just normal everyday items but you put them together in this kit and uh, and they do co command good value good money uh, especially uh, on eBay or something now Here's another item that I always found was interesting. You take this knife here. It's an inexpensive knife. You can get these $10 on eBay all day long. It was made by Utica. It was their sportsman line. You see that? And I like these. I used to get them, try and get the scouts to get them. They're a good economical knife that held up well. And you could get this one, like I said, $10. But over here is the axe that went with it. Now, again, I bought this one for like $10 at a, at a flea market. Which was a lot of money for an axe of this, you know, it's just a stamped steel axe, $10. But the funny thing is, you take this and this, you put it together, especially if you got the leather sheath, and all of a sudden that turns into a $100 item. It's amazing how that works. Now, the first thing I felt like doing today, because, uh, you know, we had the polish, the shoe polish down here, and I love the smell of shoe polishes. Uh, remember Jacob Kechmarchik, our good friend? from England who sent uh, that tape measure. I, a couple of you uh, enjoyed that tape measure. Let's take a look. Now, as a collector of tape measures, you know, you, you tend to know a good quality tape measure when you see it. And this one is, is probably one of the best I've ever seen. And it says here, Chesterman, and it says Sheffield, England. You can see here, and we went through this before, but look here, it's a leather, formed leather outer casing. And with all brass accents, it has the, uh, the cloth tape here. And you can see here, it's in, like I said, it's one foot uh, measurements, which is an old one. And uh, and it's got all brass trimming. Look at this. And and everything that was done here, you could see it's patented. It's got a uh, serial number here. It tells you what its size it is here. Uh, this one's 33 feet long. It um, just beautiful, isn't this? And it's all the brass. And look at this. It's got even little rollers so that when you're rolling the tape in, it doesn't wear the tape. How great is that? This is just beautiful. So what we're going to do is we're going to polish up the brass, you know, do that up nice. Then we're going to uh, put uh, and get this back using uh, shoe, regular shoe polish. Just get this nice and clean and uh, just put it back and clean it up. It's just so pretty and so nice. Let's get working now, on Now, I know this step might seem a little bit, uh, you know, that I'm going a little further, but you have to do this, and I'll tell you why. Uh, you see, when we're going to use this, uh, a metal polish, and we're going to be using Noxon today for the, it works well on brass, or brass or works anything, but uh, brass is such an easy metal to polish up. You can use anything, even toothpaste, if you didn't have anything, but um, we're going to use that and a Q-tip, but you, you don't want to, what happens is once you start to polish the brass, it turns into a black and that black if it gets on here will stain the leather you don't want to do that so you got to cover it up now to do that you see it's got these two little discs here okay now what you want to do is the first thing you want to do is take this is called a spring caliper you see you see these all the time and you wonder what they're for well you take a measurement here approximate of the outside of this uh this hole here you just you, all you do is you tighten it up or loosen it up here get the right uh diameter here and then you find something around the shop and I just happen to have this piece of tubing that fits just right and then you trace that onto a piece of cardboard any kind of cardboard and you cut out that circle like this and now what you're going to do is you're going to place this around here put a couple pieces of tape there do another one on the other side couple pieces of tape that'll protect the body of the tape measure and that'll allow you to work on this and get this nice and polished without staining the leather see now everything is uh, capped we don't have to worry about getting any outside of that little brass area now we're going to take q-tips and a, a soft cloth and we're going to polish this out and get all that nice and shiny Now you know my favorite part. Remember what the tape measure looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. 
Look at this, how nice this came out, huh? Now, uh, we just, you know, all we did was clean it up. There's nothing really done here, but, uh, you know, polished everything with that brown shoe polish. You see what a nice job. This is what leather has to be maintained. That's the problem with leather. It's also the beauty of leather, but it has to be maintained. So a nice coat of shoe polish, especially in the threads and everything. You have to get it in there so the threads don't rot. And uh, it looks real nice, you know, and I polished everything out now. Everything and we're gonna this is all smooth, but we're gonna put a drop of oil in all the mechanism before we store it and uh, Did up here real nice all the catches around the edge here, you know, and it's just a this is a beautiful Beautiful tape measure, you know, you don't see them like this anymore. It's so comfortable in the hand. That's just a, a Perfection Sheffield England. They they made some good stuff over in Sheffield Okay Next up, what we have from Jacob's tool uh, haul over here that he sent was this beautiful Warrington style hammer. Now, this is an English Warrington style hammer, and I found that out uh, not only from your comments, but my buddy Dan uh, let me know. He told me what it's actually used for, you know, for cabinet making, and that uh, this side was used for driving breads. I, I don't get it. I do not get it. And I was hoping maybe we could figure this out. So in order to do that, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I found this old piece. I probably got this from a crib somewhere. This old piece of uh, hardwood. We're going to uh, turn a handle down and experiment with this hammer to see what is up and how this thing works and who uses this and why this is shaped like this, this cross peen. Now, again, we're going to use the spring calipers again. And this, these are called... Remember, these were outside calipers for measuring outside. These are inside spring calipers. How you use these, you squeeze them together. You run this down here like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to want to measure the inside of this hammer uh, compartment here. The, so what we'll do is we'll tighten this up here. You see that's kind of loose. And we'll just loosen this up until it's just about snug. Right about there. It's just touching, okay? Now you lay this down like this. Then you take your outside ones and you run them up here and you adjust them just perfect so that they match. See how it's matching nicely there? And this is what we're going to use to uh, to turn the uh, wood dowel down just so that we get an approximate uh, distance from here. That's See if you look here, that's the the hole opening right there. Now again, we're just going to use this uh, just temporary. It's a temporary handle because I want to try out this ha this hammer and uh and see exactly how it works so we're going to turn this down make a quick handle for this and uh and try it Now again, this is just a temporary handle, but you can see here, we just formed a quick handle on the lathe and then we uh, shave down here and that will go into here. You see how, and we want it to be very, you see how close the tolerances are? So now you have to be very careful. You have to shave a little bit here and there and then squeeze and fit it because you want this bottom to rest against the swell here. That's what that swell is for. The bottom of the hammerhead rests against the swell and then we'll wedge the top and that'll hold it in. So uh, fitting always takes a little finagling and some time. So we'll do that, but we're getting close. Okay, we have some preliminary fitting. You see here, I always like to drill a hole at the bottom here and then have my, uh, this is the split line that uh, we cut so that we can put the wedge in there. But I always put a hole in there to stop any further splitting. And then what you do is you can see when you fit it on here, when this is fit right, when you slip this in here and it's not, not we, we didn't even bang it in. First of all, it's got to be straight across, which it is. But you see here, the bottom here has to be tight all the way around. You can't have any gaps in the bottom. That's, you're always going to have a little bit in the top because the wedge is going to open that. But the bottom has to be tight before you even start. So once you're satisfied with how tight that is, then you can put your wedge in and uh, your hammer. Now, ready. this uh, head was kind of crudely, uh, crudely ground, but I'm going to be working on it. But I know I'm going to lose the name when I do. So I want to show it. I believe it's Quality Wuko, W-U-K-O brand. I'm not really sure, but I never heard of that brand. 
But anyway, then we're going to get back to and uh, try and grind out some of the, uh, the areas here. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this hammer looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Boy, this came out nice. Now this is a pleasing looking hammer. The, the proportions, the colors, the dimensions. And uh, this handle came out. Look at how nice the top came out here. And you see I made that little wedge. You know, isn't that cute? <laughs> Anyway, uh, obviously a little Scout Crafter Red here. Now, uh, let me tell you uh, a little bit about this type of hammer and why uh, we had a little controversy at the channel. Now, this particular hammer configuration, the head, the pattern, is called a Warrington pattern. And uh, it is a uh, comes from a family of cross peen hammers. Okay, now you have different type of peen hammers. You have ball peen hammers. Uh, you have cross peen hammers. That's the hammers that where it goes like this, where it's a, uh, where the the back peen will travel this way. You have a straight peen hammer where this will be up and down. This instead of being sideways will be facing this way up and down. That's a straight peen hammer. And interestingly enough, do you know who invented? The ball peen hammer, the uh, humble ball peen now, hammer. This beautiful style hammer with the ball on the back was invented by Jacques Ball peen. How amazing is that? Uh, who would have thought that, right? But uh, any of the, and when they, uh, the term when you're hammering something is called peening, or peening is uh, is actually deforming the metal, and that's where it came from, the, the name. But, um, Another interesting fact about the ball peen hammer is that your standard ball peen hammer is a harder surface than that of a uh, carpentry hammer. And that's because a carpentry hammer, you basically want to grip the nail more or less and whatnot. And a ball peen hammer is used a lot of times for striking certain tools and things like that. So you need a more durable hammer. But ball peen hammers are supposed to be of a higher Rockwell hardness than a carpenter hammer or some of the other hammers. Now, the finish I chose for this hammer, I chose it's basically a gunstock finish followed by a coat of shellac and then two coats of wax, a butcher's wax and then a, uh, a coat of mother's wax. Uh, I didn't polish the head here. This is just off the grinder because I, I wanted the gripping. You know, I don't want to, you don't polish too much the faces or the heads of hammers because you want it to grip what you're hitting instead of sliding off. Um, one of the... Features of this style pattern hammer is uh, it's got to have a flat area here and it has to have a conical or slightly dome shape here so that you can set the nail without damaging the wood. Um, and like I said, the reason I went with this finish here is because this is considered an indoor hammer. Now, I know since YouTube came out, a lot of people have been introduced to linseed oil. And everybody loves linseed oil because of how easy it is to go on. You know, you just wipe it on and you're done. And uh, don't get me wrong, I like linseed oil for my outdoor tools because this is a linseed oil finish. Linseed oil finishes traditionally capture a lot of dirt and uh, hand oils and things. And, you know, this is what they look like. And, and, you know, and it's fine for my outside tools, but for my inside tools, I want them a little bit more presentable. So I don't like a linseed oil finish. Um... As far as durability, you know, a lot of people are, you know, again, they like the easiness of the linseed oil for the inside tools and whatnot. But um, I have tools that are 30, 40 years old that came with the original shellac or lack of finish from the factory and they never failed. Uh, let me tell you why this became uh, a bit of a controversy, this hammer. Now, when I first featured this hammer a couple weeks ago on the, uh, the channel... Uh, my buddy Dan, who's also my mentor, uh, he wrote to me and he said, uh, he told me that it's a Warrington hammer and what it was used for and how it was used. And he said that this was meant for driving in small nails for cabinet makers. And I couldn't understand how this would work because, you know, here's a, these are breads or nails or small nails or pins. They call them all different names. But, you know, typically if you're working with something that's, uh, this is about uh, three quarters of an inch, close to an inch, you know, you have a lot of hang over here that you can use the hammer and not worry about hitting your fingers you know but when you start getting into the real small ones you know anything less than a half an inch here is a half inch nail that if I wanted to drive you could see here now I'm getting close to hitting my 
my fingers, you see, I'm hitting my fingers. Whereas if you turn this around like this, use that wedge, you can tap the head of the nail just enough to start it. And then you could flip it around and use the head. That's how it's meant to use. And sure enough, Dan was right. I experimented with a lot of small nails. I don't usually use these small nails. And how we used to use them was typically, you know, you would use it a, uh, grab a, uh, needle nose pliers or something like this, you know, and, and put it over the area that you want to hammer and, and do it that way. But, um, I, after using this Warrington hammer for a while, I could see how this would, you know, eliminate the fact of needing that, uh, that extra tool. Again, here's a real small nail and, you know, I got pretty big fingers. It just comes, you could see here, it's just breaking where my skin is. So, but I'm using the flat end and tapping it without pinching my, you would think that it would pinch your fingers. It doesn't. Slips right in between your fingers and taps that nail in and then you could drive it in like that. So, very uh an interesting and I'm I'm wondering especially since we have a lot of English viewers out there if they've ever used this type of hammer or how much they use a any cabinet makers uh nice design definitely going to incorporate this into my uh into my repertoire. So in closing, special thanks to Jacob Ketchmarchik again for uh for those great tools we're still going through. Thanks to all of you for watching. Hope you have a nice day. Take care now. Bye-bye. Seven point six two by three nine full metal jacket.